We are back for another episode of Gym Girl Chats, and we have another very special guest today. We have Carly Ann here, which you might know her from her podcast, Crazy Over Easy, or from Instagram, Carly Andell on Instagram. Uh, So welcome to the show, Carly. Thank you. I am so happy to be here. I love the topic. (laughs) Yes, and I actually have a very important question to start off with because this has been going around, and I'm very intrigued by people's order. What order do you get ready in as far as like hair, makeup? Up and getting dressed. What order do you do those in? Sue, do you know my life? I feel like it's a shamble. So <laughs> as of the last two days, I have attempted to actually lean back into a morning routine. So I have been like brushing my teeth, washing my face, getting dressed, but then I like do my makeup later. I don't know. So I feel like for me, It depends on what kid I have in my arm. It depends on seriously how the morning is unfolding. I wish I had a clear answer, but you know what? That's something I should probably actually figure out. I don't even know how my mornings unfold at the moment. Well, what about like if you're doing like special event or you're doing date night or something like that, then what order do you go in? Okay. hundred percent. I do my hair and then I do my makeup and then I get dressed. Okay. We are in the same boat. I always think it should be hair, makeup, getting dressed because my reasoning is that hair, sometimes the hair like needs to set or needs to kind of like sit there before it's all ready to go. Like let's say you curl it or you do something with it, then you don't want to like pull your fingers through it. You need it to like sit. So for me to not mess with it, if I'm left to my own devices, I'll just touch it. And so then if I can focus on my makeup next, because I want my makeup to be as like fresh as possible, but I also want to stay in comfy clothes for as long as I can. And then last second, it's like, okay, clothes are on. I'm ready to go. Okay. But can we also admit that sometimes while we're doing our hair, we start to sweat. (laughs) And I feel like I sometimes am doing my hair and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to shower again. Like I just am so warm. And then I don't want to have my makeup on while I'm doing that. So for me, it's more of like, do my hair, totally let it set. And you and I have similar hair. Like it's right now, it doesn't look that way. But the curls and when you're actually like styling it, (laughs) You got to let it sit. You got to see what little mm-hmm. what little things want to kind of come out. But then for me, it's – I feel like if I do my makeup first and then my hair, I'm just so warm after. And that could be because I'm like intermittently grabbing a kiddo. But sometimes I'm like <sighs> – I mean, I have like under boob sweat. I'm like, this is not cute. <laughs> no, I definitely agree. And it's just like if I feel – Like if I do my makeup and then my hair isn't done, then I feel like my makeup doesn't look as good. And so it really helps with me kind of like gauging where my makeup is to a certain degree because otherwise it's like not all come together yet. And so you're like, am I still ugly or does like the hair just need to come together? But if you do it the other way, then you're like, okay, I'm in a good spot. Thousand percent. You nailed it. It's like that final, is that fine? Yeah, (laughs) I I can't. I got to. Yeah. You know, it's kind of interesting. That's me in the mornings right now. I'm really working on at least like putting on some foundation. I have no idea what that is. I'm so sorry if you can hear that on your end. I'm on my husband's computer, everybody. It was a hot mess of technology. So if you hear anything going on, (laughs) I don't know what's going on with this computer. But at the moment, I'm like really trying to get back into pulling myself together. If you have an audience of moms, I feel like that is something that is such a struggle. And so putting on some mascara, putting on some foundation, is such, I don't know, just like a little bit of a mood boost, but I never have it all together. So it's never the hair, the makeup, and the outfit. And so you're kind of like, okay, which hat have I not worn today or this week or whatever? And so when you do pull yourself together, it's like, it is. It's that final product of that hair is done. So when you finish that last stroke of mascara, you're like, oh, okay, and I don't even have the fit on yet. So I feel like it's... um I don't know. For me now, I feel like I probably appreciate that a little bit more than I ever did in the past because it's a, I don't know, a full come together. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm someone who I honestly like really love the look of like your hair done, your makeup done, and then casual clothes. And so I'm fine if it's like the outfit is the last thing to come together. Um, You're preaching to the choir. I actually kind of look like a tree today. I wore brown pants and this top and I didn't really realize it. And then I walked out and Casey was like, you kind of look like an evergreen tree. I was like, I don't know if I should take that as a compliment <laughs> thank or you. what. Christmas trees are yeah, beautiful. Thank you. You're so right. <laughs> Appreciate you. 
I know Alex right now is going through or it's not a phase, but he's someone who just like works better when he's like dressed better and put together. And it's so funny because when we walk out in the morning of like walking out of the bedroom, he's like wearing dress pants, a belt and a polo. And then I walk out and I'm wearing like this huge t-shirt that I slept in and like basketball shorts. And he's like, how do you work in that? He's like, how are you productive in that? This always amazes me. And I'm like, I just am. I, I got to be comfortable to be productive. So it doesn't, I just need to like wear whatever I'm comfortable in. <laughs> totally. I actually read a while ago, or maybe I heard it somewhere. They were saying that even if you are on a phone call, doing an interview, recording a podcast, and even if there's not a visual, they said as women to actually wear high heels because oftentimes it will actually change how you carry yourself. Like it'll change your demeanor. And I was like, I mean, I I probably would never do that, but I totally get it. Like the concept makes complete sense. Mm -hmm. And Casey and I actually just got back from vacation a few weeks ago. And I would just putting on my wedges at night, like putting on a heel, I like you feel better, right? You're just like, oh my gosh, I feel great. And then every day that I'm home, it's like, he actually came home yesterday with new socks for me because he said that my socks needed a revamp. I was like, I'm sorry. Um, should I be judging myself for this? I was like, yeah, you're probably right. But once you become an adult, honestly, socks are a good gift. And especially, I don't know what kind of socks he got you, but I, and I also don't know if you ever tried the aloe socks, but the aloe crew socks are like a whole nother level of sock. No, I don't even know if I didn't know they had socks. Oh my gosh. I will send you the link, but also I will disclaim to anyone listening and you they do cost twenty like four dollars per pair, so I really only get them when they're gifts. Like I have maybe four pairs, and they've all been gifts, like birthday gift or Christmas gift, because I like every time I'm like I should just replace my old ratty socks and get the socks that I deserve, and then I put them in my basket, and I'm like, never mind, I don't want all these socks. Twenty four dollars, Sue, per pair. I know, but once you try them, you feel like these are so good. Like I've literally gotten other people on them who like my mom and my sister who are like, that's ridiculous. Why would you spend that on socks? And then they got I got them for a gift for them. And now they're like, I need more aloe socks. I'm like, I'm very sorry, but this is just the life we have chosen now. I will say sometimes like some of those little things I actually I was buying myself swimsuits. And I mean, let's be honest, the material is like this big, like it's not very big. And the amount of money that I will spend on this little piece of material and totally justified, right? Like totally justified. And then I'll go and buy something that's like, maybe, I don't even know, it's probably of same value or if not more value. And I'll question the price of it, right? I'm like, oh my gosh, how is that X amount of money? And then I'm like, oh, I just spent three times the amount on this little tiny piece of material. So I fully get it. And a sock's important. So send me that link. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will. And you will be mad at me, but also be grateful. So I'll take it. Uh, but getting into some different things here, you've already established that you're a mom. So anyone listening, um, let them know a little bit about your life and just what that looks like for, because uh, we do have a lot of mom listeners. And if you are a mom listening, um, then I will have a link down for our uh, newsletter where we have specific stuff just for moms going out. So this is in our main newsletter. Um, and we can even send out a free pelvic floor guide um, if you do sign up today, but um, tell them what your life looks like as a mom right now. Uh, first of all, I'm going to say everybody listening, sign up for that newsletter and the pelvic floor work because, oh my gosh, that is so beyond necessary. So yes, I have two kiddos, two boys actually. Um, my oldest will be four in August and my youngest will be two in September. So I feel like I've been on the mom journey for quote unquote, a while. But at the same time, I feel like there's so many things that you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm still a first time mom. Um, but yeah, I feel like, you know, it's interesting. Once you become a mom, I feel like it's such an incredible title that you want and you cherish. But in some aspects, it sometimes trumps all titles that you have or all titles that you knew yourself about. And something that I've really been realizing lately, because I feel like on social media, especially you can hear like, oh, I lost myself in motherhood or I found myself in motherhood or now I have this purpose. And I just didn't connect with either storyline for the last few years. And that's been hard because I think, as you know, we put our life out on social media, right? We share as much as we can, have the coaching background. And I now am in this season where I'm like, oh, I can share with you 
what I'm going through, but I can't coach you through it. And I've always kind of had that like coaching aspect of life of like teaching of all of that. Um, My background's actually early childhood and family studies and my master's was school counseling. So like I always came from like wanting that leadership role in somebody's life. And I finally realized the other day, I was like, you know what? It's not about like losing yourself or finding yourself. It's genuinely about meeting a new version of yourself. And I think as sad as it is, it's taken me almost four years to recognize that. And I think that has removed such stress from my life. And maybe it's added stress because I share so much on social media. So I feel like I have to really figure out where I'm at so I can share the how-to of life. And I feel like with motherhood, it's just so beyond the how-to and just really trying not to miss the moments. But that's hard because, I mean, as you know, like you're very similar. Whether or not you have kiddos, we work from home. And now that I do have them, it's like I don't want to miss out on anything with them. And so finding that work-life balance has been has been wild. But yeah, that's my motherhood at the moment is two boys and that they're home with me. I have one that's now in preschool, but um, I never thought that I'd have two boys. And so I feel like I'm still adjusting <laughs> to that. I We actually waited to find out what we were having. And so I don't know if it was gender shock or what. I have I have a sister and then I'm really close with my mom. And I'm like, oh, I have two boys. Like it still sometimes is just... <laughs> crazy, but it is so fun. They are, it's, yeah, it's absolutely incredible. Our journey, it it was kind of a crazy journey to get to motherhood. And so I just, yeah, I cherish it. And I've had to kind of, I don't know, you wear all the hats and it's, it's definitely a blessing. Yeah, it's interesting because I've always seen myself as becoming a boy mom. Um, And so I'll be interested whenever when we do become parents of like what they end up being and what that looks like as a whole, uh, because there are just such different dynamics, whether you have two girls, a boy and a girl, two boys, it is so, so different across the board. But you were preaching to the choir of you just talking about wearing all the different hats. I actually had therapy yesterday and was kind of talking through that of the aspect of stress struggling with the fact of like, we do want to start a family soon, but trying to figure out what that looks like within my work life of I'm very passionate about the things that I'm doing within work and I'm not wanting to quote unquote give them up. But I also am very much so wanting to be present and to be able to be there for all those different moments. So um, I love that you mentioned that because I think it's something a lot of women do struggle with and it's hard to kind of have that aspect of, oh, you can have it all. And it's like, you, you can have it all to a certain degree, but there is a lot of pushing and pulling with that of different instances that you might have one thing more than the other um, and recognizing what that harmony looks like more than like I have this perfect balance of 50% work, 50% being a mom um, or something like that. But you actually mentioned something great of just getting to know a new version of yourself. And you had mentioned it recently in a podcast of saying that even though you're three or four years into momhood, you are 30 plus years into knowing yourself as a human. And so then trying to figure out things mom-wise, instead of taking that headspace of like, oh, I've been doing this for three or four years, I should have it figured out of like, hey, I'm I'm learning this and I'm figuring out and meeting this new version of myself instead of like trying to push myself into this box of what I should be doing or how far along I should be. It's like you're still r- really new to momhood in, in reference to how well you know yourself um, and what you, how many years you've had for yourself and what that looks like. Exactly. And I think that for me, it, you know, my podcast is very much like my therapy. I feel like it's where I can kind of work through thoughts. Um, and I think that for me, that was so important to recognize, right? And how many transitions did I go through up until being in my 30s, right? There's so many shifts and transitions, but it's only you that, I mean, for the most part, it's only you that's impacted by it, right? Like maybe family members or friends, but you're the one that's working through that. And then becoming a mom it was as the boys are changing, as they're changing from season to season. And when they're little, it's a lot of changes quickly. It's whether it's their sleep, whether it's their talk, whether it's their walking, all of it. So as I'm going through the shifts and the transitions, as are they, and it's like all of a sudden, you know, that you hear like, oh, your heart's on the outside of your body. But it really is where I'm trying to process things. 
I'm also trying to help them process things. And so I've had to give myself so much grace in recognizing that. But for you, I want you to know, I mean, obviously from what I see, you have so many incredible systems already in place and so much incredible support. I definitely think that your transition into motherhood, you are going, it's going to be incredible. It's going to be beautiful. You are definitely an overachiever. So I think that you will hold yourself to that balance, maybe a little bit more than what, you know, somebody typically would. But I feel like where you are at with your businesses and the support that you have within your spouse and your team, I think that's going to really allow you to have those mornings, have those evenings where you're just like, you know what? everything else, it will get done. I do think that you're never ready, but I definitely don't think I necessarily had the right systems in place. I'm not the best at asking for help. And so I didn't have, I didn't have an assistant at the time when I had my first, I didn't really, I don't know, allow that transition to be easier than it could have been because I didn't know how to ask for help. And so I think with even having a team, somebody to help with your podcast, it's, you already know how to communicate, Hey, I need help. Or, Hey, can you do this? You already know how to delegate. I didn't. And I feel like I, I was learning how to release tasks while also becoming a mom, growing companies, whatever it may be. And I think we're always going to continue to meet new versions of ourselves, especially as entrepreneurs, right? You're always going to try and level up your businesses or level up uh, your relationships in your life. But I think something that you have, you have those systems and you do have the ability to ask for help. It'll just look different in motherhood. Um, I also, Casey and I didn't have the best communication skills prior to parenting. And so I think that that was also a huge shift was learning how to grow as a couple. And um, our marriage is really important to us. And so I feel like I transitioned into motherhood, but I like held that fear almost as opposed to the faith side of it of like, oh my gosh, is our relationship going to make it through? Whereas you just have to know like it's a transitional period and over communicating is not bad. So I'm excited for you guys. I think it's going to be a beautiful season, but there's a lot of unknowns with it. And it just, Casey always says it'll all work out. And I hate that statement because I'm so type A, but it's so true. Like somehow (laughs) it all works out. And I'm just like, I give him the eye roll. I'm like, okay. That statement actually is very fitting for a lot of aspects of life. I know. It's feel like in a relationship, you do need that balance of someone who is like the more type A and then the person's like, everything's going to work out. And it's like one person being driven crazy by it, but it's like they're complementary personalities to have in place because that's very much of Alex. If he's like, let's just like, it's all going to be fine. Like, let's just have babies. We'll figure it out. And I'm very much like you if I'm like, while there is no perfect time or like there, you will never be ready, so to speak. I'm like, there are things I can put in place to ensure I'm in a better spot. Um, And so like, that's what I'm working on right now is how can we continue to put these things in place to make sure that I'm like, this is a way that I'm also like looking out for myself. It's not me trying to like necessarily control the entire situation or the timeline, but it's like being aware of, I know that this is going to be a transition in any way that I can make it an easier transition for myself. I will do that. Yeah. I think for me, I'm definitely, I don't want to say controlling, but I like to have control. (laughs) And so I feel like for me with motherhood, you really can't. And we unfortunately actually lost our first little one at 11 and a half weeks. And so it was such like a, I I don't even call it a reminder. It was such like this wake up call of, wow, I really can't control the situation, especially when it comes to motherhood and pregnancy and your due date, right? I mean, I had our due date written down. I had, okay, you know, our first 4th of July. And like, I literally had all these things figured out. And then obviously that storyline did not unfold the way we had planned. And then we got, I mean, it's kind of wild, but we ended up getting pregnant very, very quickly with our, fir- our now first after our loss. And we didn't know for a few weeks, like it was all over the place. So when that happened, I was still grieving, but then all of a sudden I'm like, wait, you know, this is such a beautiful blessing. And I kid you not, it was just one of those moments where I was like, Carly, you're entering a season of life that you you simply cannot control. And that's terrifying, right? Like it's so terrifying, but it's also so exciting. But it's so funny because now our second little one, he is like the epitome of I'm like, oh, God sent me you because I am such a controlling human and I cannot control. Like he is 
the most independent. <laughs> I mean, he's not even two. And I'm just like, mm, you, you've got a huge lesson for me to learn. And I'm, I'm, I'm slowly figuring it out. But <laughs> I just feel like sometimes with that, I do still try to control situations. And it's definitely been a beautiful blessing of motherhood to be like, <laughs> you, so you don't want to look at it as dropping the ball, right? I think especially being entrepreneurs, there are certain times that I'm like, oh, I'm dropping the ball over here. But it's just my attention is needed elsewhere. And again, that just goes back to being able to delegate and execute and letting other people do those things for you because your attention just, it's not even that, I mean, yeah, sometimes your kiddos, they're definitely more important than other things. And so I feel like you just get to a level of understanding that you've transitioned into that season. And I don't know, you'll start to actually, it's kind of cool. I feel like you'll start to figure out areas of your work and areas of your business that you're just like, I'm so passionate about this. I'm not willing to let this go but this I can allow somebody else to kind of take care of. And it almost releases this freedom within yourself of that control factor because after a little bit of time, you don't even realize that you've released it, right? It's those first, it's that beginning when you're like, Mm -hmm. I'm sure even with your clients, right? They are afraid to give you the control in their health and fitness, in their nutrition, in their workouts. And then all of a sudden when they've now release that stress on themselves of what workout am I doing today? What am I eating? How, you know, what do I need? It's all of a sudden it's programmed into them by somebody else. It's like that, you know, I think it's maybe more type A people, but it is such a cool feeling when all of a sudden you're like, oh, it's, you know, somebody else is helping me. I, I can move forward in this other manner because this is what actually needs my attention. And I don't know, it's really freeing. Yeah. And I think something you mentioned of just like being able to ask for help. We've done a few different episodes um, just because we also have multiple coaches that are perinatal certified. I'm perinatal certified. We are very passionate about our moms. um, And it's something that we really talk about the aspect of like ask for help and get comfortable asking for help because you cannot do everything alone. And it also just doesn't make sense for you to do everything alone. Like with you talking about delegating, it's like it doesn't make sense for me to try and control and do everything. It actually will be done better if somebody else is doing some of it and then I'm doing this part of it. And it's just so important to recognize like if people are there, like they want to help you. If they ask, how can I help? Like, don't be afraid to tell them what they can do instead of thinking like, oh, I'm going to be a burden on this person. That's something I talked about a big time with one of my clients is that she has her family, her husband's family nearby. And she was like, I'm having a hard time getting to the gym and doing all of these things. And I'm like, hasn't your mom asked you a ton of times if she can help? Hasn't your husband's, like your in-laws asked you if they can like watch him? She's like, yeah, but I like feel bad because I should be doing it all and I should be doing X, Y, and Z. And I was like, they're asking you. They want to help. Like let them help because that's also going to help you that you still need to pour into yourself. Like you can't just be always doing everything for everyone else. You need to also do things for you. I think our first response in so many ways, like when somebody does ask, Uh, oh, can I help you? I think, oh, no, I'm totally fine, right? Like that's just an easy, whether it's getting groceries into the car, whether anything, it's just, oh, no, I'm totally fine. And I've noticed that that is my first reaction. And even the other day I was carrying the boys down and we have a ton of steps to get to our front door. And there was a worker across the street and he's like, hey, do you need help? And I was like, oh my gosh, no, it's totally fine. And I turned around and I was like, actually, you know what? If you could grab those three bags out of the back of my car and help me carry those down, that would be wonderful. But it was just this like, I was like, wow, that actually came out, you know, by, oh, no, that's totally fine. It almost came out too easily. And I was like, Carly, you are a hot mess right now. Like, you totally need help. And I think that that's something that those are even little ways that we can practice it, right? It doesn't have to be the huge, I need to call somebody up because I need to go to an appointment and I genuinely need help here. It's in those little moments of at the grocery store when somebody asks if you need help, just starting to learn to say, yes, I actually do. I think that that is something that is so monumental and so huge, but also overlooked, right? We do live in such a independent society. We also live in a society right now, in my opinion, that there isn't a lot of human interaction. And so when those human interactions do happen, it's almost awkward. It's like, oh, wait, are you talking to me? Did you? No, 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 I'm I'm okay. <laughs> and I think that that also, I actually had our first during August of 2020. So it was a very like, wild time. And I think that that didn't help my ability to transition transition into motherhood. Um, 
but yeah, I just think if a lot of us could, I don't know, be more aware of interacting with others and maybe asking others if they need help, right? Like, I think it's kind of that give and take. If you feel comfortable, I would totally help out somebody. And I think that's just how you start to recognize it. But I do think that asking for help and accepting the help in any area of life is, yeah, I think it's crucial. Yeah, I love that you mentioned just in those small ways because it honestly, it is 100% still my default to be like, no, no, I'm good. I've got it. And just being able to say yes to something. And sometimes I, I used to think of like, well, what if they're just offering to be polite? And it's like, if they're just offering to be polite, me saying yes will teach them to no longer offer to just be polite and only offer if they actually mean it because I will take them up on it. And if we are in a culture that we're just doing it to be polite, it's like, then take people up on it because now what are they going to say? Oh, just kidding. I was just trying to be polite. If that's their answer, then it's like, okay, then great. Then don't help me. And I'm going to go find someone else um, to go along. But it's like realizing that if someone asks you, do you need help? Like you can answer yes. And that's okay to be able to do. I'm uh, I, on the flip side. I'm so guilty of that. Casey will be outside and he'll be doing something in the yard. I'm like, oh, do you need help? And he's like, well, actually, could you go? I'm like, oh, wait, I, I don't have a green thumb. Like I don't, I just am not in the yard <laughs> type of a person. And sometimes I'm like, why did I offer? And he's like, and he's, he'll jokingly be like, oh, I need you to go grab the rake and grab the gloves. And I look at him. He's like, I'm totally kidding. I know you actually don't want to help. And I feel so bad because I do a lot around the house. I will pat myself on the back. But I don't know why when he's in the yard, I'm like, oh, do you need help? And I'm like, Carly, don't offer. Like, you genuinely don't want to help. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned that over the past few years. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, just don't offer if you don't actually mean it. Uh, and then you'll be okay because then you'll never be in a weird situation of someone being like, yeah. And then you're like, oh, no, I don't really want to do that. <laughs> That's actually such a great point. I never really thought of it that way. Low reps is best. High reps is best. Fruit is so it's good. It's terrible. For you. you should lift heavy. High reps. Carbs low are needed. Keto squats are bad for your Squats are great. You for should your squat ass to grass. Toes. It's fine. It fits my macros. For idiots. When there are so many mixed messages going around, it's hard to know what you should even do or focus on. But that's exactly where physique development one on one coaching comes in. You might have heard of online coaching or even hired a coach before, but we believe in teaching you the why behind what we do while truly taking your life into consideration. We want to train, educate, and empower you to reach your goals and help you to stop spinning your wheels and just finally feel good. And hey, we're here to help you look good too. You need you. Your health is your wealth. So join Physique Development and let us be the last coach you ever need. Uh, well, talking about trying to <laughs> to do all of these things, balance all of these things, what does that look like right now within like your gym routine or what you're doing in the gym right now? So I have done a pretty good job. Actually, after our first, I'm, I'll pat myself on the back. I got right back in there. I think that I thought I needed to become the person I was. Like I had to be able to go right back to who she was postpartum, get back into the same rhythms, uh, same routines. And I definitely forced it. But at the same time, it felt good because movement is so important to me. Um, but I think, so we started trying again, like pretty soon after our oldest turned one. And so I really don't think I like navigated that um, workout routine, that postpartum. What does that really look like? I just got right back into what I was doing and it was great. And my body responded. But then when I had my second, it was hard. Uh, he didn't sleep. He He's 20 months. So he'll be two in September. He just started sleeping through the night at about 19 months and he, we had like the hit, hit and miss seasons where like he'd sleep through the night and then he wouldn't. And uh, it kind of was interesting because I feel like for so many times I've talked to my, you know, I'm not doing one-on-one -on -one coaching anymore, but all the things I used to tell my clients, right? Like you're going to have to have dedication over motivation and all these things. And it just became like, I was like, oh, I'm so sleep deprived. And I couldn't figure out if something was a reason or if something was an excuse. Um, I've actually done a great job with keeping movement in my routine but I've had to allow movement to genuinely be movement. Is that a walk? Is that an actual workout? Is it a 20 minute hit? I've had to give myself grace and honor all types of movement. And that, that has gotten me through this second postpartum because I started feeling like if I wasn't following a structured program or if I wasn't doing, you know, my, you know, push day, pull day, like if I wasn't doing the things that I knew, then I was failing. 
And that was hard because it's like, it's one thing to know the education side of it. It's one thing to know what our body actually can thrive on. It's another thing to be able to push it aside and be like, I just need to move for my mental health and my physical health. Maybe my muscle growth at this time is not going to be at its peak. Maybe the actual program that I'm doing is not going to be benefiting me as much as something else could. But there's also a level of frustration when you can't complete a workout or when you're just too exhausted. And so I will say this last year and a half, almost two years, it's definitely been just honoring movement. But I have gotten back into lifting in the last probably three months, like actual lifting or like I go back to the the basics, right? Your squats, your hip thrusts, and really trying to focus a little bit more on progressive overload, but still keeping my workouts within that 30 to 40 minute range because that's just my sweet spot right now. That's when I know either a kiddo is napping or I can get them to sleep at night and then I can go downstairs and not be up until midnight. Um, But like I was saying at the beginning of this, the last two days, I have gotten back into my morning routine because mornings are just when I know it can get done because by the end of the day, you're just kind of like, I thankfully I have discipline, so I'll get downstairs, but it's also just that all day where you're like, am I going to get it in? Am I going to get it, get it in? Is it going to be effective? And if you get it done in the morning, it's almost like, I don't know, you can just check that day off in a way and it feels good. And so I will say the only reason why it's worked the last couple of days is because the kids are sleeping through the night right now. <laughs> um, I know some moms are great about it where they're just like, you know, I have four kids and this one was up from this time to this time and this one, you know, and they still can get go to the 445 alarm. I am not a kind human <laughs> if I just ignore the fact that I didn't sleep. So that would be a day where I'm just like, okay, I'm going to take the kiddos on a long walk because that's how I'm going to honor movement today. But yeah, I would say I'm finally getting back into a standard actual lifting program probably three to four days a week. Um, that's my sweet spot. It used to be five to six, three to four is just perfect. Um, focusing more on walks. I never really, I mean, you know, I came from the competing background. So it was like, if I was going for a walk, it was for the cardio. It was for, uh, needing to create more of a deficit. Whereas now it's definitely more for the enjoyment of movement. It's, uh, being able to break my day up. That's one thing I definitely think is better about my journey now is I love moving throughout my day as opposed to, getting in that intense hardcore workout and then almost like not doing anything the rest of the day. Now it's more like 30, 40 to minute workout somewhere along the the span of the day. And then maybe a 20 minute walk here or maybe an hour walk, like just put moving it all, like trying to move throughout the day. Even when I'm working, I'll set timers to make sure that I stand up, whether it's doing laundry, make a bed, do something just to create more movement throughout the day. So yeah, three to four days a week is my sweet spot as a mom. And then trying to walk, I'd probably say five days a week. So I I definitely aim for 30 minutes of movement every day. Um, And sometimes it is just putting on a YouTube video and doing the pelvic floor work. Like that to me is so important. And I notice when I don't do it and then I go to do a leg day, my lower back the next (laughs) day is wrecked. It's like, (laughs) oh my gosh, it is just such a compilation of everything. So yeah, it's been a journey this time, but we're we're working our way back there. And some of you guys might have to go ahead and rewind this two or three minutes to hear and listen again to what Carly said, because it was so important of just focusing on the movement aspect instead of holding yourself to some standard, because life is just going to look different, whether it's temporarily or it just looks different for whatever length of time that it is, it's something that that's what I really talk about within non-negotiables. If it's not that my non-negotiable is that I get all of my training sessions in, my non-negotiable is movement. And so that allows me to really pay attention to what does my body need. Sometimes it needs that training session. Sometimes it needs something more structured. And sometimes the the answer is, how can I just show up for myself with some sort of movement? And oftentimes that might just be a walk and it's kind of re- programming or reteaching, relearning what that looks like for you in your life and just being able to have what are these core tenants that I go by, these core non-negotiables. And like for me, it's movement, it's water, and it's sleep. And it's like within sleep, obviously with being a mom, you can't always control that. But like within water and movement, those are things that you can control. And it might not look exactly the same as it did before motherhood, but it is 
it definitely makes a difference. It's something is always better than nothing. And listening to your body of you even saying of like, hey, if I don't get sleep, like it's not going to be productive for me to train. It's like, that's very much how I am too of I, it's not going to be good for me. It's just going to be so much better for me to walk and dropping my ego instead of being like, well, you said you were going to train and now you're not going to. It's like the circumstance changed. It's not that I just didn't have dedication or I wasn't disciplined. It's that the circumstance changed and I need to be able to make that decision on what is going to be best for me. Um, But you're also so right on getting it done in the morning if you can. Uh, That's something where I had trained early in the morning the other day. And then at the end of the day, I forgot that I had even trained that morning. And I was like, oh, I I already did that. I don't even have to worry about it now. I know. That's how I felt the last couple of days. I feel like it's almost like, and maybe it comes from the competing background, but you're like, when your workout is done, not that the day is done, but you're like, oh, wow, like that, there's another day checked off, right? And it's not even 7 a.m. You're like, day checked off. I'm like, oh, wait, I haven't even done anything <laughs> with the kids yet. But I do think a couple things like what you were saying, I think the important thing for me, and I know I said it earlier, whether you're starting a new journey, whether you're in the middle of a journey, whether you're frustrated with your health and fitness, you're going to have to choose your tired, right? Right now, for me, it's do I choose it in the morning? Do I choose it in the evening? And then when it comes to excuse or reason, you are going to have seasons when there is a reason why you're going for a morning walk versus a lift, right? It might not be safe to go for a lift if you, or do a lift if you haven't gotten the sleep that you need. And so I really think it's important. I I know I have a lot of women, they're like, oh, I'm seven weeks postpartum. I'm like, how'd you get back into it? And I think that that's a very important season to recognize when you are in a season of reason versus a season of excuse. I was getting to a point where I was in a, a season of excuse because I'm no longer nursing, so I can ask Casey for help. It's like I nursed for pretty much the first year with Conley, so then that's our second little one. So for me, it was in the middle of the night, it was only me. So if I was waking up tired, I had a full-on reason. Casey could not help me. Now I'm leaning into the season of excuse because I can ask for help. I, I can ask to rotate mornings, whatever it is, or rotate middle of the night if that's something that's important to me. And I wasn't doing that. And so I was in this season of like, oh, here's my reason. Here's my reason. But I'm like, okay, I'm almost two years postpartum. And now now it's becoming an excuse because I can ask Casey for help. Um, and so I think that's also really important to recognize because you are going to be in a season where there's a reason why something is not being executed to its full potential or you're not figuring out that morning routine yet, right? And I think it's really important to recognize we all have different timelines. For me, my first postpartum was a completely different timeline than this second postpartum. Same parents, same body, same kids. I mean, like, or not same, you know what I mean? Like same process, (laughs) same boys, whatever. The journey has been completely different. So whether you're trying to mirror the journey you had before kids or you're trying to mirror the journey you had after another kiddo, for me at least, that's not the case. I can't mirror them. I have to allow a new journey to unfold. I think that's also hard for a lot of us as well. Even with you, I'm sure each prep is different, right? You can go off of strategies and things you've done in the past, but it's still a different prep. There's still a different you know, um, atmosphere around you, there's different elements, there's different factors. And I think that sometimes is hard, especially in the community of a lot of us who came from a past of working out, or maybe you never have, and now you're a mom and you're just like, I don't have a background on this. Just, I think that those are important factors to look into is like, are you in a season of reason or is it now becoming an excuse? And uh, another thing, at least for me, if you only have 20 minutes, give it your all those 20 minutes. So sometimes I only have 20 minutes and I want to lift and it only ends up being two lifts. I really try to make sure I'm not going through the motion. Something I used to do in the past, I could check off my full workout, all six exercises, all the sets, reps, whatever. But I know I didn't leave it there. Whereas now I'm in a season of like, hey, if I'm only going to be doing two two lifts, I, I do my very best to make sure that I fully do those movements because even though it was only two exercises and it only was 20 minutes, it for me is so much more beneficial than just like grabbing a pair of dumbbells and like doing a quick squat. It So I think that that's also important is 20 minutes is incredible. That's totally fine. Just 
leave it there. Literally, something is better than nothing. And it's hard to sometimes get past that of like earlier this year, it was something where I was consistently in the gym for like 60 minutes, having hard sessions, being able to push myself, feeling really good and empowered by that. Then life happened and there was a lot going on. And it was like, I couldn't give that anymore. But instead of saying, well, since I can't do the whole 60 minutes and I can't go as intense as I was going, I'm like, I'm going to get in there for 20 or 30 minutes and just move my body. And I did like two or three months of just three times a week, 20 or 30 minute sessions. And it's like, I didn't lose all of my progress. I didn't lose all of my results. I actually saved my results and maintained my results because I wasn't pushing my body past something and I wasn't giving up on it either. I was like, this is where I am right now. This is the availability that I have right now. And I'm going to make do with what I can with it. It looks different. It feels different. And you can even like mourn of like, I wish that it was back to where it was. And that's also normal and human and just life. Like you can be like, I wish it was different. But at the same time, if it's not going to be different, how can you make the most within what you have and just being able to do something for you? Because in the end, that's still showing up for yourself, still doing something for yourself, even if it doesn't look exactly the same. Yeah. Casey and I were just in Turks a couple weeks ago. Um, and that's like our place. It's where we met. It's where we worked. It's where we got married. And we hadn't been back in five years. Um, if anybody listening, my husband and I, we met working for an international resort company. And so we had kind of like a, I don't know, wild, fun way of meeting. And we hadn't been back to this one location since we got married. And I kind of worked myself up where I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm not in the same shape I was when I got married. It's an adults only resort. So like, I mean, it's just the smaller bikinis, the more like, you know, you can, you can get dressed up and all those things. And I'm not going to lie. I like called my mom a few times and I was like, I'm getting nervous for this trip. And I don't like to hold my value in my body. I did that for so long, but I think it was just, I was starting to recognize and realize and accept the changes that my body has gone through. If that makes sense. I don't think it's something to be like, Oh, I've given up on myself, but If you've got ladies here who have nursed kids, like the upper area, the boobage is not where it used to be. Things don't fit the same. A little bit of loose skin, like these things that are changes of your body that sometimes can, I think, hold us back from continuing to take steps forward because you're like, oh my gosh, this has changed. This is different. It's never going to be what it used to be. And I think sometimes we dwell on those things, right? And I finally got over myself and I was like, Carly, it's a beautiful thing to be able to age. It's incredible to be able to live life, right? And while I think I was also having a little bit of like, because I'll be hitting mid-30, I'll be hitting total mid-30s next month. (laughs) And so I think I just had this like, I don't know, maybe a midlife crisis, but with us going back to this place where like I felt so youthful there, right? I was 23 And in the little bikinis, I was the one teaching the fitness classes. And so I think it just put a lot into perspective with, in relation to my health and fitness journey, in relation to the physical changes that maybe I want to make with my body or I had in the past. But like you said, at the end of the day, you have to be able to show up for other reasons than just the physical aspect. Cause there's certain parts of my body that I cannot change now, right? Like they will no longer be the way they used to be. And that's totally fine. It doesn't mean that I stop trying to improve myself or work on things. But I think that just kind of put so much on the forefront of my mind when it came to my current workouts and my current health and fitness journey, my current desire to wake up in the mornings and show up for myself where I could flip it and be like, I I get to do this, right? And I think so much of life is mindset, right? And I think that I definitely am somebody who believes that we are entitled to all of our emotions. So if you are mourning a past version of yourself or if you are mourning a past season of yourself, that's fine. But it doesn't mean that you've devalued or taken away from the current season that you're in. And I think that's really important also. It's okay to, I don't know, appreciate what you had, but you shouldn't take away the appreci- appreciation for what you should have now, if that makes sense. And so I ended up wearing the thong bikini and had a great time on my trip. (laughs) And that's all that matters. And it's actually funny. You mentioned of like um, in another podcast you had talked about of like in my head, I'm still 23. And that's also how I view myself. Like I 
always have to, when someone like asks my age, I always have to think for a second. Cause like to me, I'm just like 23 years old. I'm 22, 23. And it's like, I love that I feel that way. Cause that shows like where my health is, where I like feel internally. Like I love that feeling. But then it's also something where I have to ground myself to a certain degree of like, you aren't 23 and it's okay that you're not 23 anymore, but like you can't look at yourself like you're 20, like, and expect you to look like you're 23, even if you feel 23. Oh my gosh. Okay. I have to tell you the funniest story. So I'm the same. Okay. So I actually dropped out of grad school when I was 23 and that's when I started traveling. So I feel like I like got stuck in this vortex of like, that's when I met Casey. I'm like, oh, I'm 23. So I have actually done that where people are like, oh, how old are you? I am. And 23 is what comes out. And I'm like, plus 11. So <laughs> Okay, so Caden is now in preschool, and his preschool teacher is adorable. And I I totally thought, I was like, oh, we're probably around the same age. <laughs> okay, so I was kind of a creep, found her on LinkedIn, and it said that she went to my high school. And I was like, oh, my gosh, okay, awesome. I thought that the dates that it said that she was there, I thought she worked there. <laughs> no, no, no. She graduated then, Okay. So I kid you not, after I'm telling Casey, I'm like, oh my gosh, I think that she's like close to my age. I go into her room and like, this is nothing. Like she's stunning. She's beautiful. Like she is so sweet. This isn't like, this is me just thinking I'm still 23. It was her birthday. Okay. There's like beautiful signs all over. The kids made her signs. She's 23. There's like (laughs) a sign that says that she's turning 23. I was like, oh my gosh. I like, I straight up, but like I, it like put me back in check where I was like, Wait, I knew she was that age, Mm -hmm. but I thought I was that age too. And I was like, oh no. And I feel like, I think maybe now that Caden's in preschool, I just, I mean, I definitely feel like a mom, but I also don't. Like I want to wear, I mean, I like wearing the cute little outfits and I like wearing the the skimpier bikinis, not around the kids. But I think sometimes I'm just like, I don't know. I love that. And so when I go to the preschool, sometimes I'm like, I don't know if I fit in here. And it's actually happened at sports too, where I'm just like, I just want to make some mom friends. But then I also feel like, I don't know. It's such a weird, awkward yeah. place. I'm not going to lie. I, I feel like I'm back in middle school where I don't know where to sit for lunch. <laughs> I literally have definitely answered the completely wrong age and Alex will be there. And he's like, no, you're not. And it's like not even me trying to lie about my age. It's me like literally yep. not knowing my own age. And it's also something where it's very confusing because, well, off of two things that you said. One is when we see people in the wild, so to speak, in real life that they're like 18, that they look like children to me. And I'm like, remember when I thought I was an adult when I was 18? And then there's some people that you see and you're like, are they 24 or are they in middle school? Because first everyone knows how to do makeup now and like look cute. And I'm like, do you just all skip your awkward stage? Yeah. I'm like, whatever happened there? But I have such a hard time telling people's ages now. And then I'm like, I don't want to also be staring at this person and then they're like a child and they're like why is this person being a creep and I'm like no I'm just like you and they're like no you're older and I'm like oh yes. crap <laughs> but on the same thing of like wearing the cute outfits and everything I was walking around our neighborhood and we're probably the youngest if not one of the youngest couples in our neighborhood and I was walking around and I had on like shorts they were like an appropriate length but then I also had on a crop top and I just like halfway through the walk I then became aware that I had a crop top on after I'd passed like all these quote-unquote adults and I was like not that I necessarily care what other people think but I do wonder what they are thinking because to me I'm just like be bopping around but to them they're like why is this 30-year-old in a crop top? Or are they like, is she in high school? I don't I don't know. I'm like, do people view me? What age did they view me? Because I literally think that I'm in my, well, I still am in my 20s, but I think I'm 23. And then I uh, saw a picture recently. I'm like, why does it look like I have wrinkles? And I'm like, because you do. <laughs> it's not because you look like it, you do. <laughs> oh my gosh. In our bathroom, our, we have like horrible lighting throughout our house. It's a very old home. And in our bathroom, it's like the lights like right above you. And I swear it like hollows out my eyes. Oh, yes. And every time I'm like, oh, okay. I'm being so Maybe humble. I'll go do my bath or my makeup in the natural light. Like I literally look at myself. I'm like, that's not from, no, that's just. <laughs> I know. When I I'll see like signs of like, aging. <laughs> Yes. It's so crazy because it's like what you said earlier of it is such a privilege to age and it's like a beautiful yes. thing. But it's also something where it's kind of jarring when you wake up and you're like, oh, I'm I'm like actually older now. 
but I do feel young still, which is great. And I love that I've like felt better each year that I've been alive, even if, you know, wrinkles come or whatever else comes. I'm like, at least I feel young. At least I feel good. One thing I could do at 23, though, where like now I'm trying to get back into this morning routine. I'm like, you know, the alarm goes off at five. And I was actually thinking about it because my brother-in-law was talking about it. We used to go to bed at 4.30 or 5 in the morning. You know what I mean? Like we had the energy to just go all night. And so when I worked in Club Med, I would literally be out with the guests until like 4.30 in the morning. Sue, I had to then go drive a water ski boat at 7 a.m. No, thank you. No, 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 no. I mean like, but I was I was totally fine. I was ready to go, bikini on. I can't fathom what that would be like now. I remember vividly being a freshman or sophomore in college. And uh, at the time, I was like, going out way too much and drinking way too much. And I was just, you know, doing the college thing. And I remember looking at seniors and I was like, they're so lame for not coming out anymore. And they're so lame for not doing this and not being involved in this. And I was like, literally the next year it hit me. Like I didn't even have to get to senior year. And I was like, I'm too old for this. <laughs> I'm like, I, I can't imagine. And even now, like, it's funny because when people invite us to go do things, if it's like, later than 7 or 8 p.m. that we're showing up somewhere. Either people know they're like, you're only going to be here for like 30 minutes or an hour, or they'll make a joke and they'll be like, is this past your bedtime? And I'm like, actually, it is. Like, you should be very thankful that I'm here. I should be in bed right now. Oh, yeah. I even bought like the eye mask, you know, all all this stuff. And I'm just, it's, I just, I mean, I can't even. And so we were in Turks a couple weeks ago. And let me tell you, one night, Casey and I, we woke up the next day and we were like, we are not in our 20s. We are not 23 anymore. And I was like, so we're going to go nap on the beach. <laughs> let's go play some pickleball. <laughs> yes, yeah, so let's hang out with a, a different crowd uh, today yes. than we did yesterday. Are you sick and tired of your glutes not growing? Turning around in the mirror and seeing a board for a booty. I've been coaching for nearly a decade, helping thousands of women reach their goals. The most common goal, grow my glutes. Women in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and even 60s able to grow their glutes with the guidance of my training programs. And for all this time, I've kept my best glute growth secrets only for my one-on-one -on -one clients. And that changes today. We just released our 12-week glute growth program in the PD training app. It is a four-day program with exercise and volume adjustments every three weeks. You can easily access the program through our app and track every single workout. Each exercise will have a detailed video teaching you exactly how to perform each and every movement. And guess what? I am no longer gatekeeping. I'm sharing every single one of my best glute growth secrets inside this program because you are awesome and I want you to have this program. I'm going to give you $25 off, making it a fraction of what you spent at Starbucks this past month. Use code POD. The link to purchase will be in the description. Now let's get back to the show. But I did want to ask you what some of your favorite snacks are right now. Mm, pistachios, salt and pepper pistachios, but only buy them from Costco because, dear Lord, they are so expensive at the grocery store. They are expensive. Oh, my gosh. I don't know. And maybe it's because the kids love them. And so it's just easy. Like, it's healthy. Pistachios right now are – that's, like, my quick – love it. Um, Have you ever had the honey roasted pistachios, though? No. Okay, those are a game changer. I found a lot of snacks, honestly, from the airplane when they give out the snacks, and they had honey roasted pistachios, and they are dangerously good. And we bought a bag, and we're like, we need to, because it's like, it comes in a big bag, and we're like, we need to make sure we get out what we need and close the bag, because otherwise we will just be sitting here handful after handful of pistachios. That's actually the one thing that I changed before Turks, because I was like, I don't want to go back to my... You know, I come from a very restrictive background when it comes to eating and everything. But the one thing that I actually did was I cut out eating off of the kids' plates and high chair. That was actually as crazy as it is. Like, I couldn't believe how many string cheeses I was finishing or how many – you just it just yeah. piles up. Because you're like, and I, I don't like, want it to oh, go to waste. You know, <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, okay, I need to be more aware. And so I will say I've probably backed down on snacking – um, I like, I just, I eat a lot of meat. I feel like I eat a ton of meat, but pistachios are my like go-to and strawberries right now. Mm. Fresh strawberries. We always have those. Uh, oh my gosh. I'm really into pickles and olives. Like 
I'm like, you really? think I'm pregnant with wanting salt. <laughs> yeah. I am a very not a pickle or an olive person at all, so cannot relate to that. Um, But I do love fruit all across the board. Like, I love me some fruit. That is always what I will, like, go to. I'm like, please, let me grab some of that. That was actually when I was pregnant, I was consuming so much. So I ended up buying uh, big bags of frozen fruit and, like, frozen mango, and I'd put them in bowls at night. And I would just – it kind of slowed down my – consumption. <laughs> and so frozen fruit was honestly so slaps and it's something mm-hmm. that you can eat it like directly especially if it's like a smaller thing like a berry or something directly out of the freezer but I would, I often just will like put it in a bowl and then I'll do something for like 5 or 10 minutes and then I'll just be like okay I'm ready to go and then you just snick snack away. Yeah, that's how our oldest he loves it like that. He likes we get the big mixed berry bag from Costco. Mm-hmm. Mixed berry. I will say there's something about that though the color like the the melted juices. Oh, all over your fingers. I swear. Yeah. I'm like, dude, what did you, like how, what? It's everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. I am also someone who's like, Alex and my sister always make fun of me because I like love eating with my hands. And then we like went somewhere nice for dinner and I picked something that ended up that I would have had to like eat it with my hands. And they're like, of course you picked the thing that you eat with your hands because my hands, I'm just like always like, like wrist deep in things i'm like yep i would rather eat with my hands i'm all good to go yeah my sister and i actually went to uh dinner with my mom uh two months ago we went dress shopping my sister's getting married in a year and first thing i did is i went to grab something with my fingers and my sister was like we are at a nice restaurant she got so angry with me i was like oh my gosh i mean you're not wrong but i didn't even think about it i was like I don't know, just quickly grabbing a bite with my finger. Yeah, that's the easy way to go about it. <laughs> my, uh, my pinchers. <laughs> when you are working out, do you listen to music? And what music do you listen to if you do? Uh, yes and no. But I think it's because I've gotten used to working out during nap time. So I just, I'm not one to listen with headphones in. Mm-hmm. I like putting it on the speaker. I, if I'm listening to music, I want it loud. Um, I would say, this is bad, but like I... I really like like um, kind of like a bedroom playlist, like a sexy playlist sometimes because I think I then think of myself in like a confident form, if that makes sense. Which well, is- if you have a good one, honestly, send it to me because we literally <sighs> will put on a playlist and it'll be labeled like intimate playlist and it'll play like one or two like good songs. And then all of a sudden it'll be this song where I'm like, how is this also on this playlist? Like it makes no <laughs> earthly sense. And we're just sitting there like, what is going on here? Because sometimes it's nice to have like background music just like chill. Oh, yeah. And then it'll be like some hardcore song or something that makes <laughs> It like categorically makes no sense. I'm like, there's no way that this is the same playlist. So if you got a good one, send it over. <laughs> I will send it your way because I feel like it's like a calming. So mm-hmm. you don't get, I don't like anything too intense, but I do like, I love country. Absolutely love country. But I think it's things that put me in places of like, I don't know, feeling myself a little bit. And so like country music reminds me of like being on the boat and being in my bikini and just kind of having fun. And obviously, like a fun, sexy playlist. It's like, I don't know. Sometimes it's just, I don't know. It puts you in the the good, like for me at least. Sometimes it's great. And then old school hip hop R and B. I feel like we'll never get yeah like that nineties two thousands. Oh, love it. But I f- I don't know about you. I'm not loving current music. Mm-hmm. I can't find anything that I'm like. I don't know. You know, you can go and find a song that you like, and you go to the radio mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, it's gonna play a great playlist. There's just nothing that I'm really excited about right now. So I feel like I keep playing old stuff. Have you listened to Mike before? Yes. Okay. Because I was going to say, if you like country, it's a good of like, it's not full on country, but it's great for just like chill. It's like, we always joke of when people ask of like, what type of music do you listen to? I like never know how to answer. And Alex is like, it's just vibey music. Like it's just feel good music. It's just like puts you in a good mood. Like you don't listen to anything like super intense um, unless like Alex is around because he likes like the harder music and I don't mind it, but it's not what I like listen to on the daily. Um, And so it's just nice where I'm just like, I'm just, I'm just chilling. I'm just vibing here. Just having a good time. I just love all the old stuff. Casey loves like Kygo radio, like anything that's like that vibe. Um, and I can do it if it's summer, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just sometimes feeling younger. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, this whole podcast about being young. No, <laughs> I mean, we're just 23 forever. We're just two 23-year-old girls chatting, chit-chatting about life. 
Um, oh, but before man. we hop off today, obviously we could just sit and talk for hours and I'd love to have you back on because um, that's what I was talking about with both Bailey and Laura is I was like, we should just like keep having you on because we're just going to keep chatting and it's going to be great. Uh, so I love that. would love to have you back on. But to wrap up today, what I'd like to ask is what is your least favorite fitness trend going around right now? Mm. There's a couple. I think um, discrediting anybody's movement. I just don't like that. I feel like there's a lot of, um, what do you call it when they like put somebody's workout onto their video and they like, yeah, talk they do about like a it. stitch I, or like a green screen type of thing. Uh huh. I think that I, in life, I love positive reinforcement. So I think when any, some, whenever somebody's movement is being diminished, I just don't like that. Um, I feel like they even became a season where like things I was doing, people were commenting on and it it actually held me back from wanting to share. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that I don't love. Um, yeah, I think that would be a trend that I'm not loving. And then that's such a good question. I think I've been so kind of lost on my own. Or loss is the wrong word. I've been so focused on really trying to find my own journey again that I think I'm pushing away a little bit from watching that content. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a lot of copy and paste. Yeah. And obviously I put out workouts too sometimes and it's like if you need if you need something here you go. But I just think the biggest thing is I love to tell people utilize trends, utilize um content as what you see to expand your journey. Mm -hmm. Don't allow it to be something that you copy and paste because I think it'll lead to frustration. I think it'll lead to things that just are not fulfilling your goals. So if you see me or if you see you doing things that you're like, oh, I love that. I'm going to take that piece of that and apply it to my journey. I just think that's really important. Um, and it's always good to try things like you're never going to know what works for you because different things work for different people at different stages of their life. And so it's always good if you see something, even if somebody is saying it's stupid to do, maybe you try it and then you're like, oh, it was stupid or, oh, I actually like that or I can change it this way to make it fit what I'm doing more. Yeah. And not this is not a negative at all. Everybody is running and it's making me feel like a failure. I'm like, no, you and I can stay I back and not run. I will just keep oh, going on walks because thank it you. is it is everywhere and I'm all for it. Go for it. Oh, so proud of you. Like Bailey just ran yep, 10 totally. miles. Laura just right? like getting back into running. And I'm like, I'm so proud of you, but it's just like not for me. <laughs> I, I used to be a cross country runner like back in the day and I don't know. Back when you were 23. <laughs> I was 23. Yeah, mine is like 12. Yeah. Back when I was like 12, like literally 12 lifetimes ago. Oh but I was good at it. I just don't. Yeah. Maybe my mind will change, but I've just never been a runner girly. Just not been for me. I, I, I mean, they are inspiring me. Yeah. I'm now contemplating. I was like, I actually met a girl on vacation. I was like, do you like she was talking about running and she works for a shoe or she knows shoe companies. I was like, what shoes should I potentially get for running? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it's clearly inspiring me, but. I, I just don't think it's a train I want to jump on right now. I know. But right now, especially, it's not for me just where I am in my life. But, you know, maybe one day as a whole. Um, but it was funny because, like, I had Laura on, then I had Bailey on, and then obviously you. But when I asked this question to both of them, they're both kind of like, I don't really watch other people's stuff. I just kind of stay and do what I do. And, like, you end up answering the same way. And that's even because after I asked Laura, she was like, what's your least favorite fitness trend? I was like, I don't know. I was asking you. I didn't have an answer. Um, but it's I think it's a good thing to pull from it is, like, yes, other people that are on this series or I in general might talk about fitness trends. But it is also so important just focus on you. Stay in your lane yeah. and not over consume. Because like you said, if like it puts you in a place of either not wanting to put stuff out or you consume too much and it can be very hard to then do what you need to do. And I am a big proponent of that, of just like focus on you. Do what you got to do. Stop looking at what everyone else is doing and watching everyone else. Like it's great to follow along. Like I'm not telling you to stop watching me. No, <laughs> but it's <laughs> right. really of just like Focus on you. Do what you need to do and don't just sit there scrolling for hours and hours and hours and looking at what everyone else is doing because that can be really debilitating, honestly. That's actually one more. My sister actually brought it up to me and it was something that really hit home. She was like, when you start, she reminded me, she's like, when you started your account, it was for accountability. And she's like, maybe get back into, she's like, what are you needing to hold yourself accountable? She's like, you used to film and post for yourself. Like it was more of, 
getting that workout done, you know, whatever it is. And it was just so awesome because I was like, that's so true. Like, I don't want to have to scroll to find the trending sound. I don't want to have to scroll to find the new trend. I also, I think like, you know, Laura and Bailey, same thing. Like they just want to share their journey. Right. And I think that's where I'm at as well. And I know for a fact, that's where you're at. You have so much to share from an educational perspective also. And for me, I think that's kind of my new motivator right now is I don't want to copy and paste other moms. I don't want to copy and paste other entrepreneurs. I want to hold myself accountable to show up for myself every day. And however that looks in the current season I'm I'm in, awesome. But I can guarantee you in a few months, something's going to shift, something's going to change, and that's going to need to be adapted again. I think that's really important to recognize is that it's constantly going to be changing. So release that copy and paste. Yes, couldn't agree more. And if you guys want to hear more of Carly, first, we will likely have her back on this podcast, but I will have her podcast linked down in the show notes as well as her Instagram. So you can follow along in her journey and see her posting about stuff that matters to her. Um, And she also has a shop called Brooklyn Grace. So she mentioned it um, towards the beginning of this podcast of having a miscarriage. And it was something really cool story of uh, her And her husband, Casey, were talking about what names they would like. And he said that he would like Brooklyn and they were driving and they come to a stop sign and then they're on Brooklyn Street. So really cool how that all came about. But her store is called Brooklyn Grace and she has some kiddo stuff on there, but also some really cool mama sweatshirts. Uh, So I'll have that linked in the show notes as well. Is there anywhere else that you want to tell people to find you or anything else? you want to leave people with? No, I mean, I have my website, which is carlyandell.com. But honestly, right now, I feel like I'm just so, I'm focused on the journey again. And I'm, yeah, just the new season. And I'm loving it. I feel like it's the right place to be right now. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining some Gym Girl Chats. I'll be excited to chat some more with you. um, And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for having me.